Hey everyone, it's James, and in this video, I am going to walk those of you who are new to Canvas through just the basics of what it looks like and maybe the first three things that you should do when you start it. So let me go ahead and switch to my computer screen. Now, before I begin, I should say, if you hear me say blend, that is just my district's version of Canvas. I don't know why they decided to go with that. I guess blended learning. So blend, canvas, blend, canvas, it's the same thing. And then additionally, there might be some options just depending on what your district or your campus has decided to purchase in terms of canvas use for you. So just keep that in mind. So when you first log into canvas, you might see something that looks like this. It's called the dashboard. This contains all the courses that either you are enrolled in as a teacher or that you're enrolled in as a student. So for example, here in my district, we do remote professional development. And so there are a couple of courses that I'm enrolled in as a student. However, there are also courses that I am the teacher of record of. Either I created or the district created for me to um, create my classes around. Now you can actually move these tiles around by clicking and just dragging on them and rearrange them if you want. So that's one thing that you can do. Another thing that you can do is you can change the color of the tiles by clicking on the three little dots right here. And you can give it a nickname, you can change the color. If you know what hex codes are, you can change the hex code and apply. You can also um, put a picture right here or a GIF, but I'll show you that in a few minutes. So that is one way that you can access courses as a teacher or student that you're enrolled in by clicking on the dashboard. Or if you click on courses, that's another way. This will just give you a vertical list of your courses. It doesn't list all of them, but if you scroll down to courses and you click on that, it will give you all of your courses alphabetically listed, all the courses that you're currently enrolled in as a teacher or as a student, all your concluded courses, and then also all your unpublished courses. So it's just everything. So those are the two ways that you can access your courses through the dashboard or through courses. So now let's say your campus or your district requires you to upload a profile picture and you need to change that. So right here where it says account in the upper left hand corner, if you click on that, a menu will pop up to the right and then you click on profile. When you click on profile, here's a circular thing. Usually it's gray and it has your initials, your first and last initial, but you can click on the profile to change a picture. You can either upload a picture, you can drag a picture, you can take a picture, you can take from Gravatar. I don't know what that is and so I'm not gonna play around with that. That's something new. Then when you're done, you can also edit your profile. So if you wanna put some contact information like your school email address there, your biography, any links. I should say because students, um, the parents of students in my district also have access to this. And so when their child is enrolled into my course, then the parent or guardian is also enrolled in my course as an observer. So maybe they want some way to contact me, they can always click on my profile and my contact information is there. So that might be one reason that you might update that information. So just in case your campus just wants you to update your profile, that's how you do it. Go to account, the menu will pop out, click on profile, change your picture, edit your profile information. Okay, so now you click on the course that you are the teacher of record for and you'll get something that looks like this. It's just a blank page. It says module, create a new module. And I'm gonna say that for another video, but it will look something like this. Also notice on the right-hand side, it says course status, unpublished, published. When you're ready to publish this, you'll click on this and it'll look green. That's always the one major thing that you need to do. Like if you're like, hey, I'm ready to go. It's the first day of school. And you're telling your students and they're like, this is not showing up on my dashboard. Most likely you didn't click publish. So don't forget to click publish um, when you're done with everything. So the next step I would say is let's go to settings or I'm going to go to settings. I don't know why we're saying let's, unless you're watching doing this with me, then let's go to settings. So I'm going to focus on course details and navigation. So on course details, you'll see where it says image. It says choose image. This is where you can change the tile image on the dashboard. So if I go back to the dashboard, here I have one that has a GIF in here. These ones have just color. Again, you can change the color by clicking on the three dots. But if I want a picture GIF, I can click choose image and I can either drag and drop. I can go to my computer and put it in there. I can do unsplash. So if there's a picture, let's just say anatomy. I'm gonna search for a picture. I'll just use this one right here. It's gonna apply it. When you're ready though, you need to make sure that you scroll down to the bottom and you click update course details. Because if you don't do that and you go next, it's not gonna save. So it says course was updated successfully. Let me go back. So this, if I refresh it, 
and there you go i updated the course image again you can put a gif there so if you see my pre-ap chemistry this is a gif that i had like two years ago when we first got canvas and i was playing around with it and i just kept it because it was a little bit different from all the what the other teachers were using and it was easy for my students to find it and click on it versus like where's your class at it's the one that's the only one that's moving <laughs> From there, I'm gonna to go to navigations. So when you click on navigation, you'll see all the navigation panels that you can see here on the left-hand side of my screen. Now, there's no reason for a student to have access to all these, or at least I feel that there's no reason for all the students to have access to all of this. And so you can disable the ones that you don't want to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable some of these. All you do is click on it and you just drag it down to where it says drag items here to hide them from your students. And when you do that, just keep doing it. And you can also rearrange. And so if I want my Google Drive here up first, I can do that or modules. The only one that you can't move is home because that's the home page. But I'm gonna keep it like this, modules, Google Drive and grades. I normally didn't used to have grades when we had Canvas, but then when we went um, to remote learning during COVID-19, I, I needed a way for the students to keep track of their grades without emailing me all the time. So I enabled the grades. When you are done, again, this, the next important step is to scroll down to the bottom and click save. Because if you don't click save and you move on, you're gonna have to do this whole process over again. So click save. So if you notice on the left-hand side, all the navigation panels that I disabled now have this little eye with a slash to it saying it's disabled. Now modules, I did not disable it and notice that it has a little not visible to students. That's because if I click on home, I don't have a mo module published yet. I haven't created one. I'm gonna save that for another video. So it's not gonna be there. I need to create a module, I need to publish it, and then students will be able to see it. I'm gonna go back to settings and I'm gonna take a look at this right-hand side. So I'm gonna click on the share to comments. Common area is just an area where teachers have published things that they wanna share with the general public. You can search it. So I searched anatomy. Um, you can filter by course, module assignments, quizzes, discussions, images, audio, videos, documents, pages. This is new. Um, grade levels, so on and so forth. It tells me how many results I have for anatomy. I can filter by most relevant, uh, most favored, uh, most downloaded, and you can see how many downloads this course had, 53, and it's been favorited 14 times. So that's another way for you to kind of click on that. I'm not gonna do that right now. So this is just something for teachers who are new to Canvas. Like if you don't know where to start, you can always check out the Commons area to see what other people have done and download and import that to your Canvas course. Another thing in the settings section is if you go to student view, you can see what students see. And this, I always recommend anytime you are building your Canvas page, and you publish things before you actually do it with your students, you should click student views to see what students see. Now, obviously I'm not gonna have anything because my course is blanket to skeleton course, um, but notice I had Mo Google Drive, I had grades, modules, I didn't enable that yet because I hadn't created anything, but so this is what they would see if I were to publish it and I had students coming in within the hour, nothing. You can reset everything that you've done. So if there were certain limitations that you set for yourself and you went through that as a pretend student, you can reset it back to zero. And then when you're done, you can leave student view. That's it for this video. I showed you how to access your courses either through the dashboard or through the courses. I showed you how to edit your profile picture and also edit the profile itself, how to go to settings and disable navigation settings that you don't want. Also how to change your dashboard picture to either regular picture or different color or to GIF if you wanted to do that. Also, if you're new to Canvas, you can go to the comments area and look for other courses that teachers have published to get an idea of how to set up your course. If there was anything about this video that you liked, then make sure to hit that like button, comment down below and or share the video. As always, thanks for watching and until my next video. Bye.